Good morning, friends and fellow traders. This is Doug Campbell with Right Way Options, and this is the Morning Market Prep video for October 2nd, 2023. Well, Friday, my goodness, turned out to be a pretty volatile day. We were starting to the upside, and then it looked like uh, the Congress was not going to get their job done and shut the government down, but they averted uh, the 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 major catastrophe from happening three hours before the deadline and government is not shutting down. So what do you know? We would have thought that we might get a little bit of a bounce up here this morning. And interestingly enough, um, overnight, we were popping up considerably higher. We heard last night um, in um, Asian markets, China's factory activity actually expanded for the first time in six months. And that created a nice little bounce over in Shanghai and Hong Kong really surged higher last night. But unfortunately, it was a mixed result um, in the Asian markets last night. And we have European markets looking lower this morning. So, well, we've kind of given back a lot of that upside move here um, in the early um, pre-market yesterday. Uh, when we opened futures last night. And so unfortunately, we're not looking so great here this morning. We're, we've got a little bit of uncertainty. So what does that mean for today? Well, how about we settle in? Let's buckle up. Let's get ready for the Monday edition of the Morning Market Prep video. Good morning once again, everyone, and thank you so much for being here. Thanks for giving me a little bit of time off. My wife and I had a really good time. You can probably hear I'm a little bit hoarse in my voice this morning. Uh, don't feel sick. I think it was just extra travel um, kind of created that. So please bear with me. Let's take a look at some of these charts and see if we can glean some information about how we might want to approach the market for today. Well, clearly we have a situation here in this chart that is not all that comfortable. Remember, we popped up here on Friday testing that resistance level in the chart and then immediately started to reverse back to the downside. So as you can see, this may be creating a, a, another lower high in the chart, but I think that's just a little bit too steep. Um, if we were to follow that, it could be a really quick drop, quick drop into this next level of price support in the chart. You can see we've got a few little levels in here across this area that could grab us uh, for a little bit of price support. But if that doesn't hold, you can see that possibility. We could come on down here pretty sharply in that chart if that were the case. If the bulls were to find inspiration, well, I would suggest a retest back up here would be the, the logical choice right up into this area to see if we can push on through there and if we can break through that up into this area. Now, clearly we are in an oversold condition in the short term right now. And I would be expecting some kind of relief rally here in the market to begin at any time. But boy, we have a lot of uncertainty here in our market. And even though we're beginning our fourth quarter, we don't really have much on that. We, well, we have virtually nothing on the earnings calendar to inspire today. So that puts us in a really uncomfortable situation here in the market where we really could drop on lower. Now, if you'll notice here in our moving averages, we failed at our 200 day moving average here on Friday, pushing on down below this 500 day moving average and still holding in here on this price support. So again, if we can find that inspiration, look for that little bit of a push back up. But unfortunately, we've got a very bearish overall pattern here in the chart. We've clearly broken our upside trend and a rally back into this area here could just be that next set up for the short to the downside. I know everyone is hoping for a good strong fourth quarter and I think there is some possible hope for that but we've got a break. We've got to see some of these things um, improving here in the market or we run into more resistance and possibly more downside. 
Let's take a look at the SPY. SPY also kind of locked in this range. We popped up here, tried to test. I need to push this line up here. You can see we tried to test this resistance in the chart right in here and that August low. And unfortunately on Friday reversed right in there, pushing us back down. And this morning, we've got just a little bit of bullet bearishness coming in here as well. So once again, this could potentially constitute the next lower high in the chart and push us on lower. And if it does, if we break this support in here, unfortunately, guys, as I've mentioned before, there's not much um, below that except this really big area that's a long ways down there pretty sharp um, to reach down there and that would possibly bring us down to test that 200 day moving average and I know no one wants to believe that that could be possible but we do have to look at that potential here that that certainly could be so watch that carefully if we fail this support we could get a really quick and painful drop in the SPY that would push us down into that next level of major price support in the chart. Now, if the bulls can find inspiration today, if we can hold this area of support, then I'm gonna suggest we push up here and retest this high. If we can punch through there, then that next level above, of course, right up into here. And unfortunately, that would kind of draw us close to that downtrend in here someplace and we'd want to watch that major resistance area in the chart for um, well that potential opportunity for the next shorting oppor um, opportunity in the in the market let's take a look at our qqq our qqq also um, nice move here on friday popping us up nice gap up here in the morning and probably our best chance of moving back up here this morning would be the nasdaq because of that um, big move in hong kong last night but you'll notice in here we're drawing close to another potential downtrend area in the chart and if if we were to uh, push up just a little bit more into this area right in here push up in there we're going to match up into that potential resistance area and we can see an additional selling wave to come into the market right in there but the good news is here in the qqq is that we have held this um, august low and we're trying to push back up here nicely so if the bulls if the bulls can push on higher i'm going to suggest that that opportunity that first we have to break friday's low, um, high to see if we can push on higher and if we do maybe a resistance level right up in there where i mark that chart so i'm going to grab another line here and drop that in there and say that we could push maybe as high as this and filling that gap right in here so watch that carefully if we can push on through that area then we're pushing this major resistance level here in the chart if the bears find inspiration and we start breaking this back down that's going to be our support level if that fails then we're probably pushing a little bit lower here in the QQQ. Now the QQQ is the best position to hold well above its 200 day moving average. You can see if we were to fall through here, that would really probably bring uh, substantial fear into the QQQ. And if we lost this little price support level here, well then we could drop pretty hard. We're gonna start coming a lot closer to that 200 day moving average. Let's take a look at our IWM. Obviously, IWM has been very, very bearish in the market. The rally on Friday gapping us up actually pushes us right into this potential very steep downtrend here in the chart. And we hit this major resistance area here. And well, now we're backing away from it here this morning. Probably the best um, setup short in the market today is IWM failing at that resistance and downtrend and we can see just that little bit of bearishness here in the market so if the bears were to push on through here today i'm going to suggest a retest down in here looks very likely if we drop through that area well it, it could get pretty bad we could drop here pretty fast into levels uh, down in this area if the bulls were to find inspiration today and push back up well 
you can see it right up here. We need to press through that level and Friday's high to see if we can break on through. And we need to get through that kind of a sharp downtrend here to start stretching on up to maybe see those next levels of resistance in the chart. Let's take a look here just really quickly. Our moving averages were obviously well below our 200 day moving average and our short term moving averages are dropping here pretty quickly. And you can see we're likely to create a pretty strong resistance level in the chart right in here of both technicals and um, um, price action. So we'll just have to watch if we get that opportunity to rally back up. That'll be the next sticking point here in the IWM. Let's take a look at our VIX. Our VIX, obviously, a little bit of a problem in there on Friday where we gapped up in the morning, dropping us down to this little level of price support and then reversing back up as we sold off. As you can see, I, I continue to, to remind everyone that real fear comes into the market when we hold the higher low, uh, break some kind of a downtrend, hold the higher low and then see that fear continue to follow through to the upside. Now, I'm not gonna say that that's gonna be the case today because we had that situation here in government where we averted the, um, the chaos of a government shutdown, but you can see right in here that opportunity to pop back through. That does exist now, and that's where some really big fear could start coming into the market if that were the case. We might need something to really drive it there, but watch that close. And then if we take a look at our T2122, well, our T2122 continues to be our best hope that we could kick off a little bit more relief here in the fourth quarter. Unfortunately, we've stretched up here just a little bit on Friday pulling it back. No major change here in T2122, but we do have to recognize the fact that with those bears pushing this morning, if they um, have enough energy to push on through, well, we do have downside opportunity that's been opened up because of that little bit of rally that we've seen. If the um, bulls, however, find inspiration here today, we certainly have plenty of upside room for them to move if they can get that going. Remember, T2122 doesn't tell us which way the market's going to go. It just tells us when we reach those pressured areas here in the market. And although we've bounced just like we would expect that we would off of this area and the chart, it just hasn't been enough to really garner a whole lot of enthusiasm with all the uncertainty that we're seeing in the market today. Then if we take a look at our T2108, our T2108, well, popped up there nicely and we're testing some resistance levels in the chart or almost testing some resistance levels in the chart. But not all that impressive, as you can see, this downtrend still continues here. And we've got about 24% of the stocks holding above their 40 day moving average. That's a really tough area to be suggesting that we have a lot of bullishness or should be expecting a lot of bullishness here, unless we can find some kind of major inspiration in the market. If you'll notice, we're kind of stuck between levels. We've got resistance above, support below. Really all depends on where those bulls or bears decide to push today. If we break this downtrend and start pressing these resistance levels in the chart, or if we reverse and come back down to test some of these support levels once again, that certainly is a possibility with that chart. Let's take a look at our T2107. Now T2107 also very bearish still uh, pushing back down here on Friday to come back down toward these levels of price support in the chart. Clearly we have resistance levels in the chart here to be considering if those bulls can get going, but boy, we've got a lot of work to do here yet before we start to see significant bullishness showing up in here. 37.5% of the stocks above their 200 day moving average, which is a very bearish condition, bearish enough that you'd think a relief rally could begin at any time and it should begin at any time. But with that little bit of bearish shot that we have this morning, we do have that chance that we can move on lower with some of the data that we have today. So 
just be kind of careful. And if we take a look at our T2101, well, T2101, our market breadth shows us that problem that we continue to be plagued with. And that is when we're selling in the market, our breadth is expanding to the upside. When we start that buy wave, that buy wave starts to shrink and that momentum of upside move, that absolute breadth of the market begins to shrink. And so far, we have not been able to break out of this with any major upside momentum here in the market. And consequently, when those buyers start in, well, it just fades really quickly and leaves us that uncertainty in the market of what comes next. So watch that carefully. Let's take a look at our um, economic calendar for today. And our economic calendar, we've got a few things that we want to be paying attention to here this morning. Let me see if I can find it. Um, I know I have it. There it is. Our economic calendar this morning, we have got PMI manufacturing number. PMI manufacturing is still expected by consensus estimates to come in below 50. Anything below 50 shows us in contraction in our economy. So we'll want to watch that closely. We are pushing up just a little bit, but it is suggesting that this is flat from last month. So watch that carefully this morning. That would not be all that bullish news here for today, but we've done a really good job of ignoring these numbers for a long time. ISM manufacturing, the bigger number, also is suggesting not much improvement, still staying below the 50 area here, which means our uh, manufacturing remains in contraction. Watch that closely though. There's been some hint that we might be moving that to the upside, so watch that carefully. And then of course, right in here, we've got construction spending and consensus is um, expecting construction spending to decline. Probably wouldn't be a major surprise when we consider um, our rates um, and the challenges that our consumers are feeling right now in the market. Besides that, we've got a couple short-term bond auctions. And of course, bonds continue to be a bit of a problem for us as we continue to see, oh my gosh, that pressure in those bonds, those yields continuing to move higher, creating all of that uncertainty here in the market about, well, what comes next with the old Federal Reserve. Um, keeping um, in mind that we're going to have um, a big week of jobs data here coming up. Notice we've got job openings for reports. We've got ADP. Uh, we've got uh, factory orders, ISM numbers. We're going to get the jobless claims coming in here. And then, of course, at the end of the week here, we've got the employment situation number. So all of those numbers coming in uh, this week would could be very interesting in providing either bullish inspiration or bearish inspiration so let's wait and see let's take a look at um, our earnings calendar and unfortunately guys there isn't anything on the earnings calendar of note today we have absolutely just one one stock that is confirmed to report today and it is nowhere near notable. UPXI um, will be reporting um, trades. Uh, it's just one of those little guys, not, not going to be notable at all for the market today. So no inspiration there for us to be moving along. It's all going to have to be in our economic data to move us along today. Let's take a look at a few stocks that could be setting up for today. But before I do that, guys, if you could do me that quick favor, if this is the first time you've seen these videos, if you could please click that sub subscribe button on YouTube. Also click that bell icon. Uh, when it pops up, she'll be notified every time I post a video. And if you find these videos to be useful or helpful, if you could do me that favor and click that thumbs up button, leave a brief comment that helps the channel to continue to grow. Thank you so much for everyone who does take the time to do that. I truly, truly appreciate it. Um, and also just a huge shout, shout out to those folks who use the buy me a coffee link just below the title of the video. I really appreciate that. It helps the channel um, as well. You guys are truly awesome. Thank you so much.
Let's take a quick look at a few stocks that could be setting up. Please remember guys that I was gone on Friday, so I feel like I'm not fully up to date on everything, but um, let's um, watch, see if we can pick out a few stocks that are continuing to hold up and look pretty good here. First off, as you guys know, I've been talking about KHC for a while and unfortunately KHC did not hold this price support and a little bit of concern now since we broke this upside trend any rally back in here could actually set up the next short. So a little bit uncomfortable here in that chart, but watch that if that were to fail in there. If it can come right back and push back up and hold, then I'd be back on the bullish side of KHC. But yeah, just not so much um, in that chart at the moment. A little bit of uncertainty. Take a look at Roku here. My goodness, Roku fell really, really hard. Just a really sharp move to the downside. I would expect a relief rally in here. So watch this carefully. Obviously, we've already moved a couple of days to the upside. Watch that. If that were to rest in here and place a higher low, then we could move on higher in the chart. Unfortunately, if we were just to extend straight back up into next this resistance, I would be watching this area here for the next potential short. This is an ugly pattern that we're seeing here where we've got kind of a double headed um, inverted head and shoulder or head and shoulders pattern here it's ugly and breaking that trend so watch that carefully there could be the next opportunity short there in the chart well you can't talk about the market right now without talking about oil oil has been really volatile here and obviously on friday pulled back pretty sharply but there's a story out there this morning that says the demand for oil in China is just harsh, really hard demand for oil here, even though their economy is slowing. So we'll want to watch this carefully here for that potential upside. We've got a little bit of a wedging pattern here now. If the bulls can push on through back to the upside, we might be okay here. And we're seeing oil prices moving up here this morning. So that possibility does exist that we could push back through. If the bears find inspiration, obviously breaking down in here would be a relief that the market really needs to see as we continue to see those oil prices going up, pressuring our consumers and really putting um, a strain on the FOMC as well with those um, energy prices moving up to show us well, that potential of inflation moving back to the upside. So just be a little bit careful there. Let's take a look at some of the commodities that have been looking really, really good. I have mentioned CCJ over and over and over. And although this volatility up here is starting to show that we may have stretched this a little bit too far, you still want to be respecting this trend in here. And if we can find some support in along this area and we continue to hold in that trend, don't be too surprised if that can continue to extend to the upside. So a little bit of volatility here setting in that could push us on through this level. Wouldn't surprise me there, or it could rest beyond that trend. That being said, I'm going to be watching this pretty closely for that next upside opportunity in CCJ. And you could continue to look at, got to get four U's in there, U, 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 breaking through this resistance in the chart. Clearly the volatility is stepping up here, but we're still holding in there. And that opportunity that we can find that trend in here soon and push on higher does still exist. So I would watch that URA. Also, well, let's see if I can get URA. There we go. URA also in this really sharp upside trend. Clearly the volatility has stepped up here just a little bit on these um, high prices, but watch that carefully if that pushes on higher here in the chart. You know, when I look at <coughs> areas across the market, there is so much uncertainty right now going on. You're going to have to be just a little bit careful about how you approach the market um, today. <clears throat> Excuse me for today. Um, obviously, we moved past the threat of the government shutdown, but only for 45 days. And so we still have that uncertainty out there of what comes next. We just kick the can down the road just a little bit. 
extending this debate um, as the House tries to uh, really change up um, uh, the normal process uh, of budgeting and going back to what we used to do. And that's creating all of this um, uncertainty and all of this stress here in the market that may continue. And even though we're moving into fourth quarter where we're likely to see a very huge surge in buybacks coming into play once we start moving through the earnings, we have to remember that we've still got a little bit of a wait before we kick off that fourth quarter earnings and that uncertainty can still spin us out and bring those bears uh, to bear uh, from time to time. So watch that carefully. So with that, everyone, I want to wish you all a fantastic day. I want to wish you great results in your trading. Thank you so much for that little bit of time off. If I get a chance, I'll share a couple of pictures as um, we move along. We had a great time out there. And um, I want to wish you all the very, very best today. Thank you so much. And we'll see you right back here bright and early Tuesday morning. Wish you all the best.